So then here's what I want to know. What are you accountable to your teams for? Start to tell me, what, what are you accountable to them for? This is interactive. <laughs> it's not philosophical. And you don't need to raise your hands. Let's just start a dialogue. And if we don't get this going, Dr. Mellon's is back in the room going, oh, wow, this is a tough crowd today. Man, oh, man. But we created a culture that had less than 10% turnover because the reps were empowered to make decisions on their own. It wasn't top down. Eventually, a healthy culture becomes bottom up. When people move ideas up to you, through you, with you, for you, you know you've done something right. If things only come top down, you don't have a healthy culture. Think for a second. What is it that is within your control that will move up that grid? You don't have this, this is kind of a uh, hypothetical question, right? So don't, you don't have to respond to this one yet. But I want you to think about this. How do we slide up? Because the performance of your team, the performance of salespeople, absolutely unequivocally is a reflection of how they're coached, how they're led, how they're managed. So your control, within your control, what is it, what levers can you pull to move up that scale? That's not a hypothetical question. Now I want answers. And here's what was also interesting. Sorry, dudes. A dominating male who talks a lot into the group, the collective intelligence went eh, down. <laughs> that is so funny, isn't it, Suzanne? Now they're going, there's all the kind of reasons to keep Kevin out of the group. But that is the result of the study. That's what they found. People who talk too much brought down the collective intelligence of the group, especially if there are males. When they put more females in the group, the collective intelligence went uh, up. Interesting, isn't it? There's a lot of articles right now, a lot of studies are going on talking about females making the best leaders of organizations and corporations. Let me put it in very clear terms of what you're accountable to your teams for. One simple thing, just help everyone on your team hit the number. That's it. It's that simple. You have one thing, you are accountable to your teams, one item only, and that is help them hit their number. But what goes along with that, by default, you're accountable for everything then that goes into them hitting that number. And in our research showing, and what Dr. Mallon's going to show you today, the one thing you do above and beyond anything else that impacts a rep's ability to get the number is how you coach that rep. How many of you pass your goals, your company goals to people quotas? How many of you as organizations give your reps quotas? Raise your hand. Here's an idea. Don't. Stop. Go to them and say, what do you want to produce? Nine times out of ten, you'll get numbers back that exceed what you need as a company. You have my word on that. Give it a try. <laughs> Chuck's going, I'm not sure how that's going to fly <laughs> with, the, with the big boys upstairs. I would tell you right now, within your organizations, if you're set up, if you have manager titles, dump them. And go to coaching titles. It would also be interesting to see those that want to get into management if it's no longer called management. Right? Yeah, we have, if, you, if, you're, if you're good in the field and if you have coaching strengths, you can become a sales coach. Ooh, don't know if I want to do that. I'd rather be a manager. I can tell people what to do then. Right? Now, we know we've got the wrong person in the, in the wrong role. But if I have to be a sales coach... Now I'm thinking about that in a whole different way, aren't I? How many of you, of your reps, would say you are one of those two or one of those five that changed their lives, that got them to places 
they couldn't have gotten to without you. Because isn't that what you get paid to do? Help them perform at levels they can't get to without your help.